Crocodiles are impressively large reptiles. The male American crocodile can measure as much as 20 feet long, though they typically end up closer to 14 feet long. And it may be hard to imagine, but a very special few crocodilians make the average measurements of those apex predators seem modest. Unlike living crocodiles, measuring extinct crocodiles can be difficult. Estimating the body size of extinct crocodiliforms can be challenging given the distinct body proportions of different subgroups, especially those phylogenetically distant from living crocodilians. Today, the world's largest crocodile in captivity is an Australian saltwater crocodile, Cassius. Despite being around 120 years old, the croc is still growing in size. Back in 2011, he measured 17 feet, 11.75 inches, or 5.48 meters. Cassius resides at Marineland Melanesia in Green Island, Australia. He has been there for about 35 years and was taken from a situation in the wild where he obviously was not very happy. He was attacking boat engines. But millions of years ago, our planet was home to even more terrifying crocodiles, such as Sarcosuchus imperator, a giant reptile that lived during the Cretaceous period in Africa. Based on fossil evidence, scientists estimate the croc was around 11 to 12 meters, or 36 to 39 feet long, and weighed about 8 tons. These giant crocodiles had elongated, powerful jaws that could have helped them eat fish and dinosaurs. But they do seem to have been going after pretty much anything they could. Another giant prehistoric crocodilian was Purosaurus brasiliensis that lived in South America during the middle to late Miocene era. Researchers estimated that it reached 41 feet, or 12.5 meters in length, weighed about 8.4 tons and had no competition. The extreme size and strength reached by this animal seems to have allowed it to include a wide range of prey in its diet, making it a top predator in its ecosystem. As an adult, it would have preyed upon large to very large vertebrates, and being unmatched by any other carnivore, it avoided competition. In this video, we're covering Dinosuchus, an enormous Cretaceous crocodile relative that hunted and ripped dinosaurs apart using powerful jaws lined with teeth the size of bananas. The name means terrible crocodile in Greek, and this lineage of semi-aquatic reptiles certainly lived up to its name. They were among the biggest predators in their watery North American habitats, where they lived between 82 and 73 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. And with bodies at least 33 feet or 10 meters long, they could subdue just about any animal that wandered within reach, including dinosaurs. Dinosuchus is an extinct genus of alligatoroid crocodilian, related to modern alligators and caimans. The first remains were discovered in North Carolina in the 1850s, and the genus was named and described in 1909. Additional fragments were discovered in the 1940s and were later incorporated into an influential, though inaccurate, skull reconstruction at the American Museum of Natural History. Knowledge of Dinosuchus remains incomplete, but recent discoveries of better preserved cranial material have significantly enhanced scientific understanding of this massive predator. Although Dinosuchus was far larger than any modern crocodile or alligator, with the largest adults measuring 10.6 meters or 35 feet in total length, its overall appearance was similar to its smaller relatives. It had large, robust teeth built for crushing and its back was covered with thick hemispherical osteoderms. Dinosuchus may have lived for up to 50 years, growing at a rate similar to that of modern crocodiles, but maintaining this growth over a much longer time. Dinosuchus fossils have been described from 10 US states, including Texas, Montana, and many along the East Coast. Fossils have also been found in northern Mexico. It lived on both sides of the Western Interior Seaway and was an opportunistic apex predator in the coastal regions of eastern North America. Dinosuchus reached its largest size in its western habitat, but the eastern populations were far more abundant. Opinion remains divided as to whether these two populations represent separate species. It was considered a relative of crocodiles and initially placed in the family Crocodilidae in 1954 based on dental features. However, the finding of new specimens from Texas and Georgia in 1999 led to phylogenic analysis placing Dinosuchus in a basal position within the clade Alligatoridae, along with Ladiosuchus. 
This classification was bolstered in 2005 by the discovery of a well-preserved Dinosuchus brain case from the Blufftown Formation of Alabama, which shows some features reminiscent of those in the modern American alligator, although Dinosuchus was not considered a direct ancestor of modern alligators. Despite its large size, the overall appearance of Dinosuchus was not considerably different from that of modern crocodilians. Dinosuchus had an alligator-like broad snout with a slightly bulbous tip. Each pre-maxilla contained four teeth, with the pair nearest the tip of the snout being significantly smaller than the other two. Each maxilla, the main tooth bearing bone in the upper jaw, contained 21 or 22 teeth. The tooth count for each dentary, tooth bearing bone in the lower jaw, was at least 22. All the teeth were very thick and robust. Those close to the rear of the jaws were short, rounded, blunt, and appear to have been adapted for crushing rather than piercing. The skull of Dinosuchus itself was a unique shape not seen in any other living or extinct crocodilians. The skull was broad but inflated at the front around the nares. Two holes in the premaxilla in front of the nares are present in this genus and are unique autopomorphies, not seen in other crocodilians, but nothing is known at present regarding their function. Modern saltwater crocodiles have the strongest recorded bite of any living animal, with a maximum bite force of 16,414 newtons for a 4.59 meters or 15.1 foot specimen. The bite force of Dinosuchus has been estimated to be between 18,000 and 102,803 newtons. Dinosuchus had a secondary bony palate, which would have permitted it to breathe through its nostrils while the rest of its head remained submerged underwater. The vertebrae were articulated in a procellus manner, meaning they had a concave hollow on the front end and a convex bulge on the rear. This would have fit together to produce a ball and socket joint. The secondary palate and procellus vertebrae are advanced features also found in modern Yusu Hien crocodilians. The osteoderms covering the back of dinosuchus were exceptionally large, heavy, and deeply pitted, with some being roughly hemispherical in shape. The deep pits and grooves in these osteoderms served as attachment points for connective tissue. Together, the osteoderms and connective tissues likely provided load-bearing reinforcement to support the massive body of Dinosuchus out of the water. These deeply pitted osteoderms suggest that, despite its bulk, Dinosuchus could probably have walked on land much like modern-day crocodiles. Diet in 1945, Edwin Colbert and Roland Bird speculated that Dinosuchus may very well have hunted and devoured some of the dinosaurs with which it was contemporaneous. Colbert restated this hypothesis more confidently in 1961. Certainly, this crocodile must have been a predator of dinosaurs. Otherwise, why would it have been so overwhelmingly gigantic? It hunted in the water where the giant theropods could not go. David Schwimmer proposed in 2002 that several hadrosaurid tail vertebrae found near Big Bend National Park show evidence of Dinosuchus tooth marks, strengthening the hypothesis that Dinosuchus fed on dinosaurs in at least some instances. In 2003, Christopher Brochu agreed that Dinosuchus probably died on ornithopods from time to time. Dinosuchus is generally thought to have employed hunting tactics similar to those of modern crocodilians ambushing dinosaurs and other terrestrial animals at the water's edge, and then submerging them until they drowned. A 2014 study suggested that it would have been able to perform a death roll like modern crocodiles. In 1996, Schwimmer and G. Dent Williams suggested that Dinosuchus may have preyed on marine turtles, using the robust flat teeth near the back of its jaws to crush their shells. The side-neck sea turtle Bothremes was particularly common in the eastern habitat of Dinosuchus, and several Bothremes shells have been found with bite marks likely inflicted by this giant crocodilian. Schwimmer concluded in 2002 that the feeding patterns of Dinosuchus most likely varied by geographic location. The smaller Dinosuchus specimens of eastern North America would have been opportunistic feeders in an ecological niche similar to that of the modern American alligator they would have consumed marine turtles, large fish, and smaller dinosaurs. The larger, though less common, dinosuchus that lived in Texas and Montana might have been more specialized hunters, preying on large dinosaurs. 
Schwimmer observed that no theropod dinosaurs in Dinosuchus' eastern range approached its size, suggesting that this massive crocodilian could have been the region's apex predator. Life cycle We can assume that the behavior of Dinosuchus was similar to that observed in modern crocodilians. As such, we'd like to point out that crocodilians reproduce sexually, like other reptiles, and mating occurs through the cloaca, which is located at the base of the tail of the female reptile. At the same time, the male possesses a single median penis, which, after mating, is retracted within the body. These creatures are believed to be polygynous, which means that males mate with as many females as possible. Only American alligators are monogamous pairings, while American crocodiles reproduce asexually. Since there are exceptions to this polygynous behavior, we cannot rule out the possibility that Dinosuchus may have been monogamous or parthenogenous. As with modern birds and probably prehistoric dinosaurs, crocodiles participate in courtship displays and mating occurs in the water. One month later, females start building nests, typically holes or mounds near caves or dens. The same female may build several nests placed close to each other. The eggs were laid in clutches and the incubation lasted approximately two to three months. Once the babies hatch, both parents show remarkable parental care by carrying their young to water, responding to vocalizations, and helping them feed. We must stress that things may have been slightly different millions of years ago, but we still consider these details quite comprehensive in understanding the possible Dinosuchus reproductive behavior.